Hello, hello, hello. This your boy Bobo, recovered addict and alcoholic. This is Real Ron Recovered. This is uh, our journey through the steps. Our last step lecture was on step five, right? We had admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. On the other side of that step, we ended up being presented with some of the ways we showed up. We ended up being presented with some of the ways we systematically and routinely hurt other people and cause ourselves harm and disturbances, which is also to say we were exposed to the truth about the things that's been blocking us from fellowship with a power greater than ourselves with God. And so after the fifth step was done, we were informed by the book to go take this book down off the shelf, go back over the first five proposals and ask ourselves, is our work solid so far? Have we just skimped on the surface, right? And so uh, we're now moving into step six and seven. There's not a whole lot of literature in the big book on six and seven, but there was a whole lot said before six and seven leading up to the six and seven step that, that should be recalled, that I should remember or that I should uh, be made aware of so that my work continues to be solid this far. So first things first, let's read... What it says in the interaction coming out of the fifth step, interaction coming out of the fifth step. We've done our hour meditation, thanking God from the bottom of our heart that we know him better, blah, blah, blah. So we had returned home. We found a place where we could be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we have done. We thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know him better. Taking this book down from our shelves, we turned to the page which contains the 12 steps, carefully reading the first five proposals. We asked if we have omitted anything, for we are building an ark through which we shall walk a free man at last. Is our work solid so far? Are the stones properly in place? Have we skimped on the cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make mortar without sand? <clears throat> if we can answer to our satisfaction about this review of the first five proposals, we then look at step six. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all things which we have admitted are objectionable? Are we now willing, are we now ready to let God remove is the point. Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go of, we ask God to help us be willing. So step six, is it's one of them places to where if I'm still resisting resisting the only solution offered, which is a spiritual awakening, a spiritual experience, whether it be profound or the learned variety, I still have to want this experience in order to get this experience. That's where free will comes in. If I freely and I choose to desire this awakening, which would solve my problem, then God in his mercy will meet me where I'm at and solve my problem by giving me his experience. So, uh, so, but, so step six, after, after you finish writing uh, step five, the intellectual who is resistant to the God concept or who is resistant to getting closer to the creator or higher power 
tends to gravitate more towards this idea that these things that are wrong with me, now that I know what they are, and I have this list of character defects, I have the power to change them because now I know what they are. Wrong. Completely fucking wrong. That is not what the book is. The book is not designed for you. This is not a self-help book. This is a God help me, please help me book. The program of action, the whole purpose of the book is to get you in touch with the power of reading yourself that will solve your problem. This is not about you, yourself, independently, by your own self-propulsion, coming up with some kind of personal ability to fix yourself. That, it, that, that doesn't work. And so what I want to do is I want to go back into some of the previous chapters and pull out some of the excerpts of things stated clearly that should still be on my mind or hopefully when I reread or I continue to study the literature, I come back across them and, and I'm enlightened as to what it looks like to depend and rely on God humbly. Because this is what I'm supposed to be learning. I'm supposed to be learning how to cooperate with a power greater than myself. So I do have uh, a responsibility to put up a resistance. I do have a responsibility to personally desire his help. I do have a responsibility to get completely honest, open, and willing to do the work in the hopes of getting in touch with power greater than myself. But I don't just have the power myself because I'm made aware of anything. So we'll go back to <clears throat> first page I want to turn to. We're working step six and seven. So first page I want to turn to is page uh, 62. On page 62... So we went back over the first five proposals, right? The first proposal was step one. And step one was the only proposal that said anything about alcohol or about dope, about the chemical, right? I admitted that I was powerless over alcohol, meaning it affects me bodily. And when I put it in my system, I have an allergy that makes me have a phenomenon of craving and want it and pursue it beyond what I intended before I put it in my system. And that my life had become unmanageable. It centers in the mind rather than in the body. So even when I don't have it in my body, the majority of the problem is in my mind. So without the chemical, my mind still longs for the sense of ease and comfort that comes at once. I'm confirmed to be a real alcoholic and addict, not because of the collection of consequences, but because when I honestly want to, I find I can't give it up entirely. Or if when drinking or using, I have very little control over the amount I take. Cut and dry, that makes me alcoholic. And if that be the case, I'm suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience can conquer. So on page 62, after going through step one, after reading, uh, we agnostic, when I get to how it works, it's not until uh, page 62 uh, that I finally get told what the problem is. The problem on page 62 is selfishness and self-centeredness. That we think is the root of our trouble. Driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity, we step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. Sometimes they hurt us, seemingly without provocation, but we invariably find that at some time in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. So our troubles, we think, are basically of our own making. They arise out of ourselves, and the alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run right, though he usually doesn't think so. Above everything, Above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. We must or it kills us. <clears throat> God makes that possible. And there often seems no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. 
There often seems no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. So you got this list of character defects, shortcomings, the ways you show up, your little cycle, your little how you do your thing, how you step on the toes of your fellows. You got this list now, and they're just definitive definitions, clarity about how you show up. And there often seems no way of entirely getting rid of this self without his aid. So step six didn't say, now that you know what's wrong with you, fix it. You can't fucking fix it. You don't have it in you to fix it. I don't have it in, it, in me to fix it. No, my responsibility, yes, is to put up a resistance to continue to behave like this. And yes, it is to honestly admit it to God, to myself, and another human being, the exact nature of my wrongs. And yes, uh, the Spirit's job is to convict me of this unrighteousness, of these selfish, self-centered ways, of this attitude of playing God. But I've got to be willing to have God remove it. Uh, many of us had moral and philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them even though we would have liked to. Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. We had to have God's help. So I've got this list of these character defects and shortcomings, and here it goes again. Neither could I reduce my self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on my own power. I had to have God's help. So what I'm trying to learn the big lesson here is to learn how to cooperate with God so that I can live in solution. My solution is to the precise extent that I do as I think he would have me do. While humbly relying upon him, does he enable me to match calamity with serenity? <clears throat> so this is the how and why. Of First of all, we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. If I think that I can change myself, I'm still playing God. It's the arrogance and the pride of life right there, thinking that my willpower is all powerful. My willpower is not powerful enough to make me acceptable to God, to make what I do pleasing to God, and to make what I do useful to man. That would make me all powerful. And so the element of dependence, reliance on God is what I'm trying to learn. And this will be another measure of growing in humility coming into step six and seven. But the first thing necessary is willingness. And the second thing is that the conviction about how I've been showing up. I need to feel that. I need to not want to be like that anymore. I said, this is the how and why. But first of all, we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. Next, we decided that hereafter in this drama life, God was going to be the director. He is the principal. We are his agents. He is the father and we are his children. Most good ideas are simple. And this concept was the keystone of the new and triumphant arch through which we pass to freedom. So to stop playing God, it doesn't work. And to uh, allow God or acknowledge that God is the authority over my life is the new and triumphant arch to which I pass to freedom. So then, <clears throat> so I'm working it back from the introduction to self being the problem. Now I'm going back to God and his power being the only solution. So I'm backing up now to step uh, two. So on page 44, at the very bottom of page 44, it's, it's, it's giving me a heads up of my inability to start the trip through the work. See, the doctor says that this is repeated over and over, and unless this person can experience an entire cycle of change, there's very little hope of his recovery. So starting dope to use dope and stopping using dope. Starting to drink and stopping the drinking. Stopping doesn't make me be in recovery. And starting doesn't make me be in relapse. If in fact, I've never had a spiritual experience. I never had a psychic change. I never had my problem solved. I'm not relapping. I'm just making a fucking lap. Because it's what dope fiends and alcoholics do. We swear off uh, and they're Later is a still greater relapse. Uh, uh, we take solemn oaths and then we use again. Uh, we move geographical cures and then we use again. So on the bottom of page 44, it's going to bring to light all of these 
self-propelled the self-efforts because I have a very clear idea personally of what right and wrong is and I've always been aware of the right way versus the wrong way but that in itself was an arrogance that does not include dependence, reliance, and trust in God humbly. It's, it's a matter of independence, and I need, I need to get this done for me. Uh, and it doesn't work like that. So say, if a mere code of morals or better philosophy of life was sufficient to overcome alcoholism, many of us would have recovered long ago. But we found that such codes and philosophies did not save us no matter how much we tried. We could wish to be moral. We could wish to be philosophically comforted. In fact, we could will these things with all our might, but the needed power wasn't there. Our human resources as marshaled by the will were not sufficient. They failed utterly. So you can try your ass off on your own power to be a better person, and you fucking won't be. You will not be pleasing to God and useful to man by self-propulsion. Self is the damn problem and self continues to be the damn problem. Lack of power, that was my dilemma. I had to find a power by which I could live and it had to be a power greater than myself. And it says, that's exactly what this book is about. Its main object is enable me to find a power greater than myself which will solve my problem. So, going back over here to, to step six. Let's get back over here into action. <clears throat> okay, so after we went back over the first five proposals, one, two, three, four, and five, did I say everything that I needed to say? Did I get it all out there? Was I uh, fearless? humble and honest as I could be? Did I lay it all out there? Did I take my chance on this high power and the program which hundreds and thousands before me have gotten recovered? Have, have, I, have I let the dice roll and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to win? It says, so if we can answer to our satisfaction, we then take a look at step six. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. The willingness is where I am uh, going to put up a resistance to continue and be in the way, right? So I, I do make some effort there to resist being the way I've been as it's been revealed to me in my fifth step. Uh, but I'm painfully aware of my inability to stop being the way I've been 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh I've been that way my whole life. Uh, I have, to, I still have the propensity of being that way. Uh, but I'm sick of being that way. After the fifth step, are you disgusted at what you see in yourself and in your behaviors and attitudes and in the cycle in which you show up? The things you've done to other people, the things you've done to yourself. Are you sick and tired of it? See, because the person that's sick of being that way is willing to have God remove them. If they're objectionable. The ways that I've shown up, I admit, are objectionable. And he can take every single one of them. Every single one of them. All of them. <clears throat> now, if we cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us be willing. There's behaviors, and this, this is an interesting view of it right here. There are behaviors that I practice, things I learned for self-preservation, for uh, to protect myself, to provide for myself, to provide for those I love. There are things I learned to do as a result of decisions made out of fear. There's things I've learned to do as a result of having been hurt, humiliated, embarrassed, betrayed. Well, those very things played a part in my survival. And and so I've kind of grown comfortable with those things, even though they've caused me pain. I've grown comfortable with them. But I've, I've got to get uncomfortable to get free. Right? And though those things played a part in my survival up to this point, 
I'm now aware that they are no longer acceptable from this point on. So I'm willing to hand these things over to God. I'm willing that he would remove every one of them. Uh, there are some things that, that are uh, almost second nature. They almost do without thinking about it. I mean, the list of things in my character defects and, character, and my shortcomings are far too extensive. There's absolutely no way I can remember every one of them every minute of the day to by self-will, self-propulsion, self-determination keep from doing any of them. Not on my own, but the one thing I can do is I can do the very best that I can while humbly relying on God. And then he enables me to match calamity with serenity. So as, as long as the willingness to have these things removed, these things that are no longer acceptable, these things that are objectionable, these things that are clearly revealed to me as being character defects and shortcomings, I'm now, if I'm willing that God would remove these things from me, that I could fit myself for maximum service to God and my fellows, that I could uh, be given a peace uh, to match the calamity with serenity. I'm willing. I'm willing. I've come this far. Why wouldn't I be interested even more so in getting connected to a power greater than myself that would solve my problem? So, you know, when ready, when I can honestly say that I'm willing, uh, when ready, page 76, uh, when ready, we say something like this, and this is the seven step prayer. Uh, my creator, I'm now willing that you should have all of me, the good and the bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. The thing that we tend to do at this step, the thing that we tend to do is we tend to be willing to, to hand over the bad stuff. We tend to be willing to hand over the bad stuff, almost like we're unaware of that my good intentions, my best motives, my false virtues, uh, by myself independently are just as foul as my negatives. And so now I, I am aware of that in humility, that my good is not good and that my bad is obviously bad, but my good is just as bad as my bad. And so in this state of humility, having been made small, you know, having been shrunk down from this arrogant self-will, playing God, trying to run the show, self-propulsion, arranging life to suit myself, uh, being kind, uh, modest, self-sacrificing, all this old fake-ass virtue to try to get what I want. Uh, uh, when life doesn't come off the way I want, decide and exert myself more because, you know, I'm still trying to run the show. I still run on self-propulsion. Then I get down there. I'm an author of confusion rather than harmony. I'm under the delusion that I can rest satisfaction and happiness out of life if I manage well. I, I've got this strong opinion that I can't wait to share and I want everybody to see it my way, but I'm not interested in hearing their opinion. You know, we all have our protestations. We all have our resentments. And I seem to think mine is more important than everybody else's. So this is where I begin to leave that type, that, that, uh, morbid degree of self-centeredness and I become a part of the whole God's universe, God's planet, God's people. I become one and I begin to look for my place in the whole picture as to how God would use me. And so in the prayer, it's making mention of a motivating, a motivating point, uh, I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Uh, grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Uh, there was a, a 
another part I thought about. Page 66. <clears throat> so page 66 is we're in the process of the fourth step because the introduction to self being the problem in three, the writing it down in four, the sharing it with another person and them sharing with me how I show up in five. Coming out of my hour meditation Having gone back over the first five proposals, entering into the willingness of step six, have, willing to have God remove all the defects of character, and then going to God in seven, asking him to remove them, at least remove those things that keep me from being useful to you and my fellows. Uh, here in, in step four, another, it, it's talking about escaping from resentments, but... Uh, here's another point. It, it says we turn back the list for it held the key to the future. We were prepared to look at it from an entirely different angle. So we're prepared to look at life from an entirely different angle. We've been taught face it, trace it, and erase it. Like your own determined will has the ability to do that. And so there, it's uh, some of it's legitimate. I obviously have to face it. I obviously have to admit it. I obviously got the very guilt of being that way, skewed, flawed, in error, wrong, uh, more of a problem than a solution based. Uh, we begin to see that the world and its people really dominated us. In that state, the wrongdoings of others, fancied or real, had the power to actually kill. How could we escape? And so we're talking about escaping self now. I'm trying to change some of what's being said here to kind of smash home this point. We saw that these resentments must be mastered, but how? We saw that these character defects must be mastered, but how? We saw that these shortcomings must be mastered, but how? We, 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 we see this because after doing the fourth step, it says... Uh, we've been trying, page 72, we've been trying to get a new attitude, a new relationship with our creator and then discover the obstacles in our path. We have admitted certain defects. We have ascertained in a rough way what the trouble is. We have put our finger on some of the weaker items in our personal inventory. So we know in a vague way, very small way, at the point of having written it down, looked at it, but then it is made more clear and I have more conviction about the error of my ways, my character defects and shortcomings after having faced the fears of revealing who I really am rather than that reputation I know in my heart I don't deserve of uh, the humility of being seen as I am just a person with flaws, character defects, uh, and the honesty to honestly admit them is what opens up the spiritual airways for me to receive uh, empowerment, peace, some direction. But back to page 66, it says, how could we escape? Here specifically it's talking about resentments. But here now I'm taking this and I'm applying this to these character defects and shortcomings that's been revealed to me in a deeper degree after the fifth step. We saw that these resentments or we saw that these character defects must be mastered, but how? We could not wish them away any more than, than alcohol. So, all of these things Three, four, five, six, seven. All of these things reinforce a decision I made. Reinforce step three. Because it's the new and triumphant arch through which we pass to freedom. So step three is the introduction to the spiritual way of life. On page... Uh, on page 60...
The first requirement is that I be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. And then it began to tell me about all these things that I've been doing. So step three is where I made this decision, which is that I decided to turn my will and life over to the care of God as I understood it. And if I haven't launched out on the course of rigorous action to face and be rid of the things that's been blocking me, if I haven't manned up or womaned up to, conf to confront these fears, get humble, get honest, and lay it out there and, and share it with somebody in the fifth step, if I haven't gone back to prayer and saw how super wrong the way I've been living is in its entirety to become willing to have God remove them, if I haven't if I haven't gathered the, the, the strength to make the leap of faith to ask God to remove these things, to say the seven-step prayer, then I, I, I've made a decision, maybe mentally, but I really had no intention on living up to it. In other words, I've already broken my, I've already broken my commitment to God already. And so that is uh, step six and seven. Uh, we'll keep on moving through the steps. Oh, another pointer. Uh, from 1935 to 1939, there was no big book. They worked the six steps of the Oxford group. They read the Bible and spiritual literature. After the big book was uh, written, and the first 100 had gotten recovered, they realized that some of the uh, steps of the Oxford group was a little hard to chew in one whop. And so they dumbed it down because my dumb ass needed dumbed down and uh, extended them to smaller steps to, with the hopes of getting the same outcome. So a six-step program turned into a 12-step program. After the 12-step program has been put into place, uh, and after a person has genuinely adopted this as a new way of living, there'll come a time when you realize that God is doing for you what you can't do for yourself. But, uh, but now we need more action, without which we find that faith without works is dead. And so now we're going to look at steps eight and nine. This has been uh, Real Raw and Recovered. Uh, subscribe. Share with anybody you think might have a problem or whom you think should know exactly what real alcoholism and real addiction is and also what real recovery is and getting recovered looks like. If you have people in your circle who you think would appreciate the videos, please send them the link. Love y'all. Peace. I'll be getting back with y'all on steps eight and nine soon.